Jay O. Sanders is with me. Jay, opening statement. How are you tonight? How are you feeling? What's going on? I'm fine. Just is fine. Is that a good start? That's a great start. All right. I just want to be positive here. Okay. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling well. I'm feeling well. I'm isolated appropriately. Yep. I'm far more than six feet from you, which makes me feel very safe. You say that even when we're not in this kind of situation. I generally go for, I generally go for 10 feet though, don't I? You do. Yeah. That's true. Um, I'm going to thank everybody that is watching us right now. I am, I thought that uh, we'd all be able to chat together. I'm not sure if I can see everybody's chat, but I know that people are in the room and watching now. So um, if you have questions, drop them in the chat and we'll see if we can pick that up. Um, I need to shout out a couple of people and organizations, Dylan Mooney at actortrade.com for supporting what we're doing. Uh, Dylan's incredible and actortrade.com is bringing so many people together right now. It's awesome. Also shouting out Nuchas Empanadas, Jay, check this out. Nuchas Empanadas and VIP Ignite are gonna serve, they're donating 200 meals to an emergency room to uh, staff in New York City. Um, and they're just, they just came together. For every student that came to a class, every time they came to a class, VIP Ignite decided to donate a meal to emergency room workers and Nuchas stepped up and said, well, let's do it with empanadas. So Nuchas.com and VIP Ignite uh, VIP talent connect.com are the places to go. Um, so this show tonight, folks, is going to be driven by photographs. We're going to put up some photographs every so often, and we're going to riff on the experiences Jay has had throughout his career. Um, and then if I can figure out the chat, we'll get that chat going. And I know that sounds like I'm over 55 because I can't figure out the chat, but I did figure it out during the test. Um, so I'm going to open up with a question for you. I always feel like when I um, hear you talk about theater, whether it's interviews, whether, whether it was in some of our work together um, on the bench, there's a, there's a, you bring, you talk about life and real life in the stage and not, not in the Shakespearean life is a stage, not the, all the world is a stage, but more just about what you bring up to the screen and the stage. Can you talk about the distinction or the non-distinction that you make when you're doing that? Um, yeah. Well, go ahead. Uh, yeah, no, sure. <laughs> uh, the, the, um, I, I find that my, my overlap, uh, I, I work so constantly, so regularly uh, and practice as it were through work um, and through interaction with creation of new plays as well as performing pl new and classic plays, that the line between the two has become far more blurred, that I bring more and more of myself uh, onto the stage. And so I, I wouldn't say that there's, I don't know the difference. I would simply say my stage work is always informed by my sense of being alive. So the, the, the more I live, the, the more uh, I work, the more I find myself in the work. I'm not sure if that's profound no. or just sort of matter of fact. Both, and I think that's what makes it profound. Uh, I did get into the chat, so I'm gonna do a couple quick shout outs. They're listening to you. Um, Zulima is here, Winnie's here, um, Jack Fuller's here, Tammy T is here, James Turcott, AKA Turco Ono's here. Tammy T, Jamie, hi everybody. Uh, Rip, good to see you. Uh, Amy Seaham, great to see you. Amy, one of my mentors, taught me so much. Jamie Midas, great to be here with you. So if you have any questions, Edwin Cassiano just jumped in. If you got any questions, drop them in this, um, this chat room here. Um, let's go to some photographs and you can just riff. This is low pressure fun, Excellent. right? I like low pressure, yeah. The riff. Um, who's this beautiful guy? Oh, oh. I've never no. seen him. No pressure. He's relatively familiar. It was actually interestingly shot by a, a dear friend of mine, Joe Goldman, who's a wonderful photographer and uh, filmmaker. Uh, he's done a lot of documentary stuff that's quite beautiful. Um, I know him from college, and we actually shot this in front of this exact same wall 
that I am sitting in front of right now. So you'll recognize the color. Oh, yeah, the tone. He captured, that's what I was gonna say about this photo in the first place is he captured that wall. I mean, I, you were, you take up a lot of space in the shot, but the wall, the color- The and wall the itself is quite uh, yeah. moving, I agree. He really did a great job of that. Um, yeah. Aiden, Aiden Grant just jumped in on the chat. He's an amazing photographer as well. Edwin's in the chat. All right, what about this film? Tell us, uh, tell Glory. us- Tell us a little bit about the role, but also how did you get the gig? Where were you in your career as well? Oh, God. Um, I'm not sure I remember exactly when was it maybe uh, uh, late 80s, somewhere in there, a young Matthew Broderick behind me. Uh, Andre Brower was in it. Morgan Freeman was in it. Denzel Washington won his first Academy Award for it. William Kennedy, um, all these wonderful, wonderful actors, black actors in Glory. It was all about the the uh, black unit in the Civil War um, that is commemorated. Robert Shaw, who was played by Broderick, um, is commemorated at the top of the uh, Boston Common, actually, with a famous statue up there the 54th, but it was the uh, w one of the few and major uh, black units in the Union Army. I played General George Strong and was one of the few in this movie, uh, white officers who was not a complete jerk and not using the, uh, the black soldiers as cannon fodder, but rather mm -hmm. serious soldiers. Mm -hmm. And as I said, what I learned in, in the doing of this, that this guy was the real deal, that he led the second, they were the second uh, wave and died doing it actually. Um, but we shot this on Jekyll Island in, down in uh, Georgia. Right on. But, uh, was uh, quite, Georgia, yeah. Okay. Um, Savannah, I, Savannah, right outside. We were in Savannah before this and then uh, Georgia. I got a question from our chat. Uh, Turco Ono wants to know, prefer, do you prefer film, TV, short film, documentary, or the theater? The theater. And why? Uh, because there I tell the whole story at once and it comes down to me and my presence and the audience of that night, the experience of that night. I love film. Uh, I, TV is film. I mean, depending on what kind of TV it is. A documentary I've narrated uh, between 150 and 200 documentaries. So I love documentaries, but I have a very different role to play there. Um, I, I love the variety because I learned something different about myself and my ability to tell, to communicate stories um, in each thing that I do and going back and forth from one to the other. For example, I'm always saying that my work in, as a documentary narrator is a huge help in classical theater. Uh, I use it in Shakespeare all the time because it's about taking complex ideas um, and finding the simple line through, making them as clear as possible for the person listening so that they feel they completely understand what you're saying and can follow through and stay with the story and, and keep going. And in a great documentary, that happens when the narrator is working with the picture and offering you just what you need to know. And in Shakespeare, the same thing, that it becomes the language becomes your own language, even though it's uh, antiquated, an antiquated form. Uh, uh, it sounds completely at home. One of the VIP talent uh, projects that they just did is they, they just did an entire Shakespeare um, play, just launched this morning with, I don't know, maybe a dozen actors all in their squares, all coming up on screen. And they did this remote, much right. like uh, the musicians who have been playing certain right. songs remote. So right. it's interesting. Right. Here's one. Here's one that you, I, I dug up. I found it. You got. You're in that picture. Yeah, there I am in the back. Uh, this, yeah, what's going on? Sylvester Stallone. This is daylight. Uh, this was fun. Uh, it was produced by Rafaela De Laurentiis, and we filmed it. Though it's supposedly taking place in the Holland Tunnel, 
uh, which is a matter of five minutes from our house here, uh, we filmed it in Rome. So I lived in Rome with uh, Marianne and our one and a half year old son, Jamie, at the time, uh, for almost five months as we filmed a New York scene in uh, at Chinichita. That's Amy Brenneman in the front. Um, Karen Young is just over uh, Sly's shoulder. Renly Santiago, uh, oh, anyway, around. Uh, it, it was a, we had a lot of fun um, and we shot a film. Pretending to be in the Holland Tunnel in Italy must have been a lot of fun. Here we go. Yeah, it was out. Speaking of which, this is not in Italy. Uh, if you can guess, the interesting thing about this is I'm in the Antarctic uh, working with Dennis Quaid and Dash Myhock as uh, a scientific team uh, in the day after tomorrow. Yeah. And they showed us all these unique shots of ice core samples. And I said, yeah, I know all about the ice core samples. I've seen a lot of this. And they went, oh, no, come on. What do you, I said, no, I, because I worked on a boat in Antarctica when I was 18 years old. And I, we actually had scientists on board the ship who were taking ice core samples. Wow. You, can, you can hear the garbage trucks here. This is what uh, it's like to be in my neighborhood. Well, everything else is quiet. So now they're really loud, right? They're really the resonant. In the back, exactly. No, they're always really loud. Um, anyway, so this is us uh, on set. That entire background was a blue or green screen. No. Uh, and we are. Don't do that to me. I I'm thought sorry. you were. We're we are in uh, we're in uh, um, uh, what Canada Goose outfits. Sweating. Which are all the way up and down us, and outside it's thirty below on some days which was perfect, but when we came in here, it was like 80. Gotcha. So we would do a few shots, we'd do a, a shot. Some shots? Uh, some kind of stunt thing, and then they would, uh, we'd fall down on the ground and they'd come in and towel us off because we were dying. Could, wait, you did enough shots that you guys fell on the ground? Yeah, 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 you're talking about something good. Now, the other thing is the, the line in front there in that picture. Yeah, I'll go back to where it. Where it looks like the crevice of the thing. That yeah. was just a blue plastic tarp. That's all we saw was a blue plastic tarp. They put that in uh, over the blue, and all the background and the you know, all that stuff. So we had the we had the those vehicles in the tent, but everything in the back and in the front is fake. Amazing. Um, so when we would go to jump over this incredible crevice uh, and risking our lives. It was like being five-year-olds pretending to jump over something by jumping over a blanket. And you know. there, there, Mama, jump! you know, yeah. nice. That's fun. That's, that's when acting becomes like play dates. Well, that's the thing, right? I mean, you, that thrill and that joy of being a child jumping over a puddle and bringing that to the character that you're, you know, in the location that you're in with this glacier. It's like, that's kind of what I was thinking when I was saying you're in life and how you bring life into everything, you know? Yeah, well, that's, but that's what everybody was doing too. I mean, it wasn't just me. Yeah, okay. I won't blame it all on you. All right, I'm going to chat for a sec. Nancy Lynch is here, Bill Neems is here, Andrew Einhorn, hi, Wanda. Um, Zulima says, theater's amazing because every night's unique. Wanda Phipps is here, howdy. Jack Fuller has a question um, and it ties in with actually our next picture uh, and Jack didn't know that. And maybe, uh, you know, this is, you might've been a very, very young man in order to really answer this question, were, Jack wants to know, did you ever meet JFK? Did I ever meet JFK? He's asking. No. You might I have was, been like a four. I was in fifth grade when JFK was assassinated. Okay. Um, well, let's talk I did, about- I did, meet Ke I did meet Kevin Costner, as you can <laughs> see here. Um, we, spent, we spent about five months together doing this piece that we spent, these were from our first two weeks filming in Dallas, where we did all the, the uh, Dallas sites. And the hardest, one of the hardest things on this movie was we had to learn, learn a New Orleans dialect for this. So yeah. that the entire thing I had to say was like this. 
and I was taking it from Lou Ivan, the guy that I played, who was an, a legislator from New Orleans, uh, who wor worked in Baton Rouge, but he was from the Fran from the uh, quarter, no, not from the French quarter, from um, um, anyway. But, but he, we, he was around. He was talking. So I was, I was having a, I was doing this, but this was like the second week I was on, and. I was born in Texas and everybody, of course, here is speaking, everybody is in Dallas. So they're all speaking like that, you know, that you're in Dallas now, you're in Dallas now. It's different, different here. And so I'm hearing a, a Texas accent and I'm trying to do this speech with a New Orleans dialect for the first time and keeping my hand on everything while trying to uh, keep my form together uh, as taught by a Marine sharpshooter Dale Dye on that Manica Carcano to look like a, like a, a marine uh, trained shooter. Look good there. You're, you look, your posture looks like you're ready to nail them. There you Going go. Going back into the chat for a second to uh, uh, John Cooney says that you gave him his jacket from that film. John Cooney. Tom Moore hey, John. How are you doing, buddy? Room. Uh, LaShonda Morgan's in the room. So let's go to another photo. Let's go to another photo. Uh, this is a fun little game. Uh-oh. Oh, I see. Time me. I say huh? time me. Tell us about this photograph. Who's oh, that picture? It's a very small picture there. Yeah. That's, um, that's the love of my life. That's Marianne Plunkett and me in a public theater where at some opening night, it looks like we're at the, the uh, we're at Shakespeare in the park. And uh, they always take pictures of us there because I appear a lot in Shakespeare in the park. And we, we Marianne and I have done so much together for the public. Um, anyway. Let's keep the, keep the flow going with the public. The best. This is the show that I'm doing, would be doing tonight if uh, it weren't for coronavirus. This is from Girl from the North Country. Um, I, we opened the show on a Thursday and the following Thursday night, all of Broadway shut down. Um, this is a show with a, a script, a play by Connor McPherson, written and directed by Connor, um, with songs of Bob Dylan. And I saw, thankfully, before this closed, I saw, uh, saw it in previews and, uh, you're the only guy in the musical not singing, correct? Um, well, yeah. The lead yeah. In, no, no, yeah. I do. I, I actually sing in the final number, but uh, I'm not not featured. I'm not. Uh, no, you're buried in the back. Yeah. 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 Well, um, but I'm. Right. But yeah, it's it, he's he is a character who is lacking in uh, freedom, as it were, or lacking the 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 music provides the grace for the piece, and this is a guy who's so. Uh, completely involved in saving everyone around him that he has no time uh, or energy for grace. He does not engage with that. Oh, what is this? You tell me. Him. Um, I threw a few cur curveballs in there. Yeah, I'm not sure which this is. It. I'm, I'm recognizing, actually, the extra behind me looks familiar. Law and Order, maybe, or is it? JFK? No, 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 no. This is a this is a period piece. Um, damn. I'm. Uh, okay. Well, let, I'm, let, yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. That question, could... Let's do a question from the chat then. It's perfect timing. Okay. Turco Ono wants to know, and 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 I think I know the answer. How do you take? How do you take such a break and then get motivated to go back into it? And I know I already know the answer to that from your point of view. We take a break now? No. <laughs> from gig to gig. I don't take I don't take much of a break. I, I move from project to project. I'm That's very it. fortunate that way. But if you if I did take the break, it's the hunger to get back to it. But it's also because life and life and art are interconnected that way. It's all interwoven. It's not uh one feeds the other. The more you live, the more you have to bring to your acting. So it's not uh, it's not time away. It's all time on. Beautiful. It's just about how you look at it and how you also balance the the energy and the intensity of it. 
Yeah. yeah. And you're, you're living, you're reading, you're thinking, you're watching other people's work. You're engaged in other ways. Um, you know, Marianne took 10 years, the better part of 10 years off to, to be the, the lead figure in our uh, family with our son. And she did workshops and readings and things along the way, but she backed off a lot and then came back. And she kept saying, I'm so much better now that I'm back. I'm so much more relaxed. I'm so much deeper. I know myself better. Um, and I would say her, her work, uh, I mean, it was extraordinary before, but the, the level that you can go to knowing yourself and trusting yourself just hopefully gets better and better and better. Yep. Yep. Those are the keys for that, for acting. Deneen White is in the house. David No, Elizabeth Harder. Um, John Cooney says Tucker. Is that, uh, is that like you a know, code word or is could, that? Film? Could be, could be Tucker. Uh, it was, that's the right period. I don't think that's a Tucker tie though. We had those wild 1940s ties. I got you. Uh, that, that thing was uh, Malena Cordina, Malena, what was her name? Uh, the costume designer, wonderful. Vittorio Storaro is the, oh, you the, know, the uh, uh, DP. While you, ruminate, while you ruminate down memory lane there, because you're yeah. not, you know, right. is Turco Ono has another follow up. Yes. How about your current unplanned break? break? We were talking about those breaks. Now he says, we got an early I'm as busy as ever. Uh, Marianne runs the play with me, uh, full run of the play every day. Uh, so I'm, and I'm actually going deeper into it and, and feeling a different kind of relationship to the language, just the more I do it and in the more circumstances and the more it's in me, it's gonna be really exciting to get back to it. Cool. Um, I've been looking bad. looking at uh, King Lear because I have a great, a long time fascination with that and hope to do that at some point. And I've been taking a slow, long dive into that uh, right now, mostly focused just on the first scene, um, but because that feeds me. And again, reading, Marianne, I've been watching some fantastic streaming series uh, that have been feeding us. And I'm going to ask you to share with us after uh, or toward the end. Yes. Uh, I want to go to another photo. Ah, kiss, kiss the girls. Me and Morgan Freeman. Uh, kiss the girls. This was in the forest in uh, North Carolina near Durham. We're moving fast. Oh my God! That's this is uh, this is the the uh, Heaven on Earth by Robert Schenken. Who wrote the Who wrote the LBJ play all the way, um, and uh, also wrote Kentucky Cycle. Old friend of mine. Interestingly, our brothers uh, both went to law school together in in Austin, Texas. And Helen, um, who is Stenborg, a brilliant actress who's no longer with us, mother uh, married to Barney Hughes and mother to Doug Hughes, the wonderful director who I've worked with. Uh, this was at the WPA Theater. We had, I had done the play at the O'Neill Playwrights Festival and they did this. This was the first time somebody did a play, uh, produced a play in New York for me because Great. it was what I wanted to do. Um, we're gonna go a little longer than 1030 because we started a little later. I'm not distracted. I'm going into the chat here because we wanna entertain thoughts from our audience here. People are shouting and yelling in here, by the way, Jay. Nice. Um, Andrew Einhorn wants to know, what does Jay think Dylan would make of this Corona era fiasco? I guess the times they are changing. Yeah, I think that's that says it all. His okay. words would say it better than I could. Nigel Brown is in the house watching Tom Cavallaro. Um, Tammy has a question. Uh, where did you start off in the industry, movie, film, or theater? Theater. Theater. I'm 10 years old, an all black theater in, called Caramu House in Cleveland, Ohio. My father was the executive director of, though not a theater director. Um, it was the same year that Kennedy was shot. Um, I was living there and I was in a lot of children's theater and some adult theater. Uh, and in most cases, I was the only white actor on the stage. It was a really interesting time because I saw uh, theater 
the possibilities of theater and, and casting differently, um, not even colorblind, it was really uh, looking at, uh, at African American uh, translations of many American classics. One of the first things I remember seeing there was Oklahoma. Um, but anyway, it was, um, I started there when I was 10. I fell in love with the theater. My, my theater gods and heroes were all uh, black actors from Cleveland. Nice. And one of them was my acting teacher, Ethel Ballard, and um, inspired me heavily do not, to, to do, do what not I do. Forget those, those beginnings. That's beautiful. Lee, Lee Balducci is in the house. Charles Massey, Scott Milvey. Um, Jack Fuller has another question. Bill Neems is here. Um, what about LaShonda Morgan just said best movie ever, but I don't know what movie that is. So LaShonda, tell us what that is. And uh, Jack Fuller has another question. Let's go with George Bush. How was it being him? <laughs> uh, I played George Bush in Stuff Happens at the Public, written by David Hare, directed by Dan Sullivan, uh, working with a fantastic group of actors. And uh, when I was offered it, I wasn't sure. I said, aren't I a little, aren't I too big? I, do I really look like him? I don't know. Does this work? And and then I realized when I found him that he was all inside of me. So I went on to become George Bush in a, a radical way. I understood him from inside by the time I did it. Um, you haven't let go either. I see. Well, I don't. I don't go there too often. But uh, it was my faith frees me. Um, so LaShonda was saying, kiss the girls. She loves that movie, best movie ever. Yeah. Uh, Tad Morgan says, tell Jay I signed up for Facebook just so I could say hi to him. That is true friend love, Chad That Morgan. is true friend love. That's maybe a little obsessive, maybe a little insane, but uh, I appreciate it, so thanks. Well, those are your fans. I mean, they're all, they're all insane. All right, let's move on to another photo, shall we? All right. Look how much hair I have there. Uh, that's ah, a good this is also kiss the girls. Yep. I'm gonna fly through a couple. Look at this one. This is uh, last year the Guthrie Theater. I played Cyrano. You can see I was blessed with a little more hair uh, for the role, um, darkening my beard and all. Uh, one of the great roles of of the World Theater. One of the most challenging pieces ever, and it uh, it blew me away. I I absolutely love doing it. This is from uh, the fall, the Michaels by Richard Nelson. Uh, and these are there, it's a crossover with modern dance, the modern dance world. Uh, I play a, a producer of, of um, producer manager of modern dance. And my ex wife is in the piece who is a well known choreographer. She's not in the played by Brenda wheel who's not in this picture. Uh, this is Rita Wolf and Haviland Morris, and behind that is uh, Marianne on the other end of the table, though she's a little out of focus. Um, I'm gonna push yeah, you along. Dance, dance on stage, modern dance rehearsed on stage. I'm gonna push you along because we're getting low on time. Uh, John Harris is hello. Derek Dupree's in the house. Chad Morgan said you guys worked together on a show for six weeks. I'm not sure what it is, Chad. Tell us the show. What's this, Jay? What's this, this is about? the big green. The Big Green, it's a kid's uh, movie, soccer movie. I play the nasty, obnoxious coach of the Knights. All right, and this is another JFK. Uh, this is JFK again. That's me up in the right with a oh. cigarette in my mouth. Yep, that's um, the ending, yep. Then yep. there's this. This is, what's his name? Ziggy. Ziggy from Roseanne. Hey, Dan, man, what are you doing? Yeah, I know. Uh, I, I listened to a couple of clips today on YouTube. It was great. It's we had we had a lot of fun doing About this. Three kids. Time, I, I rehabbed his bike. All right, so we're gonna go um, back a little bit and we'll get to wow. that. But tell us about unexplored. Unexplored interior. This was a play that I wrote. I worked on for eleven years, um, writing, rewriting, reworking. Uh, about the genocide in Rwanda, which is very timely because it is just now the uh, 26th, um, 26th anniversary of 
the genocide uh, on on the sixth. The president's plane was shot down. The seventh began the genocide, and it lasted for a hundred days, and eight hundred thousand to a million people were killed, primarily with farm implements, by their neighbors. Um, we did this was the actual production. Uh, we did at the Mosaic Theater, it opened the Mosaic Theater in Washington, D.C., up in Northeast. Um, and I had a wonderful group and an amazing time. And then the other picture that you did of it was from, this was the year before, and we did a live stream, a Google Plus Hangout on Air. It's a two-way live stream actually from New York City from the, the uh, Museum of Jewish Heritage to the Kigali Genocide Memorial in Rwanda, in Kigali. Uh, that was profound. And we all lit candles in New York. We were, it was everybody's cell phones from the audience, but the, uh, we had a big full house down there and, and then candles on the uh, on stage. And there they were out of doors with these big screens and they were lighting big, big ceremonial candles. It was amazing. And we could see it all uh, on, on screen behind us. Um, powerful, beautiful, yeah. what it's all about. You're also, so you're a writer, you're, you do some writing, a lot of acting, some directing. This is a book you wrote. Um, yes, this is an acting uh, diary of my experience traveling, doing a world tour with the, um, the Gabriels, election year in the life of one family, as you see at the bottom there. That's our set in Hong Kong. Great set, man. Um, I mean, great yeah. theater. Look at that theater. And that's uh, those are the programs on each. You see how organized that is on each chair they have for the program, rather than handing them individually to people and everything. Gotcha. And um, it's it all. I also have some uh, stuff in the last ten pages of the book of the European tour of the Apples, which had happened two years earlier than that. So um, that's actually available. You can find it on uh, on on uh, Amazon, um, and hopefully, with them redoing the the drama bookstore here, it will be for sale uh, here in New York as well. I read this, by the way, and it's definitely worth getting. You go on Amazon or wherever, or find a. There are other websites you can buy books on um, that you can start at first, but. I read it. it was great the the storytelling but then again like what i like when i listen to you the the lessons learned um they're strong in that so i'm gonna actually now jump back into the chat with you jay okay because um chad morgan says it was a william ing play adaptation william and yeah we did uh we did picnic picnic uh we shot down in austin texas uh and uh uh, Ivan um, Ivan Passer, who was the screenwriter for much of the early work of um, uh, uh, who who did Ragtime and oh God, great Milos, Milos Forman. Uh, they had been close best friends in Czechoslovakia and had actually escaped Czechoslovakia running ahead of the uh, the Soviets coming into the country. Um, he was full of incredible stories. He, we set it in the 60s instead of the 50s. And it was a fascinating experience. Josh Brolin was in it. Uh, Mary Steenburgen, Bonnie Bedelia, uh, a wonderful group. And I it was the, one of the most interesting things was seeing this piece that had been sexually explosive in the 50s with William Holden and it, it just seared the screen at the time was far different now because yeah. of Moore's and the way things were. So what happened was, although the, the actors playing those roles were fantastic, uh, I think the balance came more to the older generation because you were more interested in how these people had gotten to where they were and what their responses were to these kids who were in their hot phases and all that too. Um, and they included a scene for me that had been in, I think, cut from the original screenplay or something. Anyway, it was really fascinating stuff. And 
I, I was I was proud of the work in that. What I did discover on, on looking at it was it was very much my character, Hal, was, uh, was William Inge. He was William Inge and he was a gay man living in middle America um, who gets involved with a marriage of convenience with the old marm school teacher, Mary Steenburgen, who's a beautiful, desirable woman, but he, this is a gay man who is trying to make the most and still loves everybody here and becomes everybody's uncle and gives, as the character, gives gifts uh, to each character around him to help them forward with their lives as as a, a um, playwright would do in writing for their the characters and helping their characters forward and in their growth and revelation it was a that was a really fascinating thing yvonne died not long ago and i thought a lot about that experience uh our chat room is heating up here um steve barry's in the house creo's in the house tom moore tom moore photography is in the house by the way chad morgan I met her in LA this past year and she read when we did um, our celebrity readings of the bench, she read Lorraine. She blew everybody's mind. It was, it was phenomenal. Fantastic. Uh, Zulima says, wow, 11 years when you were talking about how long it took to write this play, what an example. And she says, we are so used to instant gratification that we want things to work here and now. Thanks for mentioning that. I wasn't doing that for anybody but me. <laughs> and I did, I just thought this is something I need to create a story I need to tell. And if I don't tell it as well as I possibly can, I will never um, be able to live with myself. Yeah, exactly. Um, way too important a story to race through. Turco Ono asks, as you get older, is it easier or more difficult to quote, find and become the character? Much easier. It's much okay. easier because I accept myself. That's all I accept myself and what of myself is in the character. And I'm okay with the parts of myself that aren't in the character, but that I call on to do that. Uh, I was always pretty, um, not outrageous. I was just very bold in going places. And early on when I was very young, I used my imagination a lot and would work from the outside in and find that great reality step by step as I came back closer and closer to myself. Now I, I start completely from myself um, without fear. There's, there's no worrying about proving anything to anyone. Uh, there's no, uh, I shouldn't say no, there's far less uh, about showing off, more about simply being who I am in a way that can connect with the other people in the room. I'm uh, gonna go to the last question in chat and then one question from me. Uh, Zulima wants to know, what's your biggest advice to actors trying to break into the business? Wow. And it's, you, you have to accept that it's, it is its own time. Uh, if you're doing it now, it's completely different than when I was coming into it. I found my own way and there was no prescribed way to do it when I was starting out. We talk about this a lot because uh, our son, Jamie, is a very, very talented actor and facing the same things. But the all of what social media does, all of the different media now, the fact that we're in this golden age of cable television, in which the big movies and the big thoughts and dreams are happening out there on uh, on film, uh, but still the root of things for the theater um, remains the same. There's nothing like being in the room and experiencing live the interaction between people and the people on the stage and the people in the audience. I think I I would simply advise that you put your heart uh, always into what you do. You be as resilient as you are possibly able to be and that you move forward instinctually looking for what gets you attention, what makes you a living, and what keeps you close to why it is you want to do what you do. Brilliant. That leads me actually dovetails nicely into my last question for you. Um, um, 
Spike Moran Reich. David is in watching. Alicia's watching. Hello. Jack Fuller says, thanks for sharing your life, Jay. Profound for all of us to be able to live through you, especially the young, as they are who are now building our future. I think so, too. Um, so here we go. My last question is, you just mentioned that um, people come together, people in a room experiencing that live theater. Right. Now we've got this virus that has said, you all can't be in the same room. So my question is, where do you see, and, and this, isn't, this is a short-term theme, supposedly, th two months, three months, but if it goes longer, and even as we come out of this very abrupt change in our lives and how we can't socialize, how do you see- We do, we do socialize. I socialize all day with Marianne. Okay, I, I, mean, socialize, I mean- I socialize with neighbors. I don't hug people. I mean um, in the theater, the actual theater. Right, but, the, but as, it, as we come back, we still relate to each other. And I, I'm reaching you with my voice. I'm not embracing you in the audience. I'm embracing you with my heart, my mind, and my voice. Um, that's going to continue. Even if they hold us apart at 20 feet and I call out to you, it's an expression. If you call out back to me, there's interaction there. A look is interaction. We are impeded now, but sometimes it is in being impeded that we find the drive and the desire that much greater to get back to each other. And I think the theater in that way can be a very healing force and really help us to find our way back to each other, not to encourage us to stay apart, not to encourage us uh, into solitude and loneliness, but rather to say, I'm out here. And even what we're able to do here on talking to each other and the desire to talk and to listen to each other uh, is the same impulse. And that doesn't go away. Thank you so much for spending some time with me and this awesome crowd. Poe Chris just arrived as we finish. Um, thank you to um, Nuchas and VIP Talent Connect for providing some meals. Thanks for Actor Trade for providing communication and thank you jay for entertaining my request to come in and and have a nice casual conversation i want to do it again. do it for just anybody trust me that's not what your I wife said your wife i wouldn't do it for just anybody thank you Linsky, you're a very special loving sweet man and i love you love you too good night everybody good night jay thanks good night